Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Lair by Lair. In today's tutorial, I wanted to take a look at the Adafruit Joy Bonnet for the Raspberry Pi. This is that little add-on for your Raspberry Pi. It has a two-axis thumb stick and eight buttons, so you can make some really nice and cool miniature retro game pie projects. So before we actually make a project, I need to kind of design and model the components themselves inside of Fusion 360 so we can kind of model our project enclosure around it. So this was designed by Lamar Freed and Philip Burgess. So you can get all the details on the actual component itself here. And what I'll do is go to the download section in the learning guide and kind of download the EagleCAD files. So you can download these. Uh, you can download the board schematic and we'll use EagleCAD to kind of figure out uh, some dimensions and things like that. We'll do something a little bit different this time. So go ahead and download the zip and then we'll open it up in side of EagleCAD. I'm using the kind of free version of EagleCAD. This is version 8.00. There are other versions that you can try out as well. This is what the board looks like when you first open it up. Let's make it a little bit bigger. We got all the traces. We got some component stuff, some outlines, some footprints for each individual button and things which are awesome. So instead of kind of making, figuring out the dimensions of positions for each individual component like I would in the past, I'm just going to kind of clean up this and export a DXF. DXF is basically kind of like a SVG, which is basically an outline or drawing of these lines. And we kind of need these lines in Fusion so that we can make our components in our PCB. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of open up this layers thing and kind of try to clean this up. So I'm going to get rid of the top view, which is where the, most of the traces are. These are traces on the top. I'll get rid of the bottoms and just kind of keep working my way until I get this clean looking shape. Uh, pads, I don't think we need the pads. Vias, let's get rid of those. Okay, that's looking pretty good so far. Everything else I think is okay. Some things I want to get rid of is probably uh, some of these kind of markers here. These kind of denote the version. So I can do that by using the delete key and just kind of deleting these by clicking on their little crosshairs. So I got rid of those and I'll probably clean some of this stuff up in Fusion. Um, we don't need the chip, for example. It's kind of small. It's just the, kind of the main components uh, that are important is the, is the joystick, the headers, and these eight buttons. So, of course, the mounting holes and the, the, the layout of the board. So let's go ahead and export this out now. That's pretty straightforward. Export, DXF. There are some options here. I'm going to disable all this stuff just to kind of get a cleaner DXF, cleaner shapes. And I'm going to save this in our same folder that we're, we downloaded it from, uh, from GitHub. So I'll save those out. And I'll overwrite it because I already saved it out. And I do want my millimeters as the kind of uh, units of measurement. So now in Fusion 360, let's kind of bring this in. So this is a fresh new um, design. So I'm going to go over here where it says Insert. Click on Insert DXF. And the first thing you want to do is click on when you, where you want to work. I want to work on the top, so I'll click on that. Select my DXF file, navigate to it, and just kind of open it. Fusion is going to calculate it a little bit and bring it in in just a second. There it is. I got some warnings here saying that some of the units information didn't carry over, but that's fine. There are some options here. We can change some of the layers. We can select them individually if we want. Uh, we can bring it into a single sketch or one sketch per layer, depending on how you want to work. You can update that. I don't have a lot going on here, so I'm going to say single sketch is fine with me and hit OK. Once I hit OK, I can have access to extrude things out or to clean this up, which I will do. So I'm going to come in here, double click on that sketch, and then kind of clean some of this stuff up. I don't need this uh, chip, so I'm just going to delete that. And everything else I kind of need. Uh, you can select loops by double, double clicking on something. I'll kind of make a loop for you, so I'm going to delete that. Don't really need that there. This is just kind of like a footprint of the header, so that's good. Um, so the first thing I do is kind of make these the body of these buttons, and I can do that by coming in here into one of the corners and saying, um, "Get my rectangle tool and just kind of start on this corner and probably make that." That looks good, and then we'll kind of repeat that process for the eight buttons. Not too difficult, just like that. And like that, over here, and over here, these are the kind of start, select, and these up here kind of the shoulder buttons. They're a little bit smaller, and they don't have that circle, so we need to kind of make our own. Uh, one way to figure out where the center is, we can either make construction lines or figure out 
there you go. Fusion can kind of make that for me. So I'm going to use this the circle tool. Again, just roll over an edge. You'll get that triangle, and then you get these dotted lines. I'm not holding anything down. It's just the way Fusion works. So um, this is about one millimeter or maybe two millimeters. We can always change that. So I'll do the same thing over here. Try to get that midpoint. And then over here. And there we go. Oops, wrong. I'm doing a rectangle. Circle. That's C on your keyboard. It's kind of like a shortcut. Uh, what was this two? I kind of took notes. One way to figure this out is to use calipers and to actually measure the components out yourself. So that's what I did here. And I think I have it here as 1.75. These little small button actuators. So 1.75. I'll copy that value and just duplicate it over here. Paste it over there. All right, that's looking good. Um, the next thing I do is probably get rid of some of these things here. I don't need this. Uh, the way this generated this circle here is a little bit odd. Um, it's just kind of the shape that was made uh, inside of Eagle CAD. So I'm just going to kind of delete these like that. Um, I can delete the rest of these like that. That made it a little bit easier, so I don't have to kind of select all of them. This lets me select the ring, so that's kind of neat. I can select the kind of a whole chain, and that's kind of all I need. Uh, I don't need these holes either. These are kind of the through holes, I think. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. All right, that's pretty much it. It's cleaned up. I think I can kind of work with this now and get this out. This is a lot easier than kind of making each individual component and then figuring out in Eagle CAD where they are relative to like the origin. So I, th I really like this method a little bit better. It works with this project anyway because there's some of the lines are defined nicely. So let's stop sketch. Let's go ahead and extrude this out. So I get hit E on my keyboard. I'm just going to select all the stuff here and then deselect uh, the mounting holes because they're not a part of the PCB. We're extruding out the PCB first. So I'm going to make this 1.6 because that's the thickness of our PCB. Hit OK. Now I have our PCB. Next thing I'll do is kind of make the buttons. So I'll select it from the bottom here. So I'll select all the stuff here that makes up the buttons, like kind of the main D-pad area, just by selecting them all as I'm extruding. And oh, the start and stop are also the same buttons. I won't select the shoulder buttons because they're completely different heights. Um, so I can extrude this out, but it's extruding from the bottom. I want to extrude it from the top, and we can totally do that by changing our start position. It's selected uh, right now as profile plane. I'm going to make this from object, and then it tells me to select which object you want to start from. I want to start it from the top here, and now it starts from the top, so I can. Uh, enter a value in that's a little bit better. I believe they are, let's see what they are. They're one millimeter tall, or actually two millimeters tall. So I'll type that in, two. There it is, hit enter. And now I got those buttons. Now to make the actuators, I will go back into extrude and select our button profiles here for each button on the D-pad and start and select, which is over here, start select. Start, select, all right. Again, I'm gonna change the profile from object like that and then extrude this out. I believe they are one millimeter tall. The actuators are one millimeter tall. Okay, so that's looking good. The next thing we're gonna do is make uh, extrude our kind of the body of our joystick and it has kind of a large body. Again, start from object, the top here. It is actually 5.5 millimeters tall, which is a little bit tall. It's the biggest component, but that is good there. The next thing I'll do is kind of create uh, a little stem. So if you look at the component itself, when you take, you can actually remove the thumbstick itself. The thumbstick is a little kind of add-on thing. You could kind of make your own if you wanted to. Um, we probably don't need to in this project. So I'm going to make the stem here like this. Uh, using a circle, obviously, and get in the center here. This looks like it's in the center. I believe it's two millimeters or so. I think I took notes of that. Four millimeter stem. Yeah, that looks right. We can always change this later. We can bust out our calipers and kind of measure each component that we need. I think that would be okay. So we can, we can get as detailed as we want. Um, like, say we wanted to kind of make this from object here and then kind of 
go down a little bit. That's kind of how it looks like. And then we can start off over here, start from object on that new extrusion, and then kind of bring it out like that. That's kind of how it looks like. And then we can always fine tune these if we want, maybe put 0.5 because it's not that deep of a cut. And that's pretty close. The only last thing we need to do is two things, is the shoulder buttons and the header. So let's extrude these out. Again, starting from the top here, from object top, bring these out. I believe they're a lot shorter. Yeah, they're 1.5 millimeters tall. So they're, they're definitely shorter than the bigger buttons. And then the actuators themselves are, are kind of like 0.5 or something like that, 0.6, I believe. So we can start, again, start from object over here, and then 0 0.6, there you go. All right, now the last thing we need to do is the headers. So this whole kind of thing is not really the size of the header, it's more of the size of the footprint, because the header is surface mounted. So let's export that, and probably make it one point, actually no, it's five millimeters tall. So we'll bring that down by five millimeters. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna modify a little bit to kind of get to the true value of the header. It's seven point, I think we can copy that value. If we can't copy it, we'll hit I on our keyboard, click on the thing we want, and now we can select that value. So we can do a little bit of math and say that minus uh, five millimeters gives us 2.874. Let's take that. Again, doing our new offset and then typing that in and dividing that by two and put a negative on that. So then hopefully we get five and there we go. We get five. Awesome. Cool. The thickness is also, or the tallness of this header is also five. Now the last thing we'd have to do is kind of figure out if this is correct. If the distance from this edge of the header to the edge of the PCB, it says it's 1.6. So if we measure that with the calipers, we can figure out if that's right or not. So kind of real quick. That is right, that's actually right on there, 1.67. That's not bad, that's actually pretty good. So we'll leave that and that's kind of it. So now we can kind of take this component and use it in our projects. We could also make the little thumbstick area if we wanted to or not, but it's up to you guys if you wanna do that or not. But this works pretty well, I'm gonna save this out and let you folks download it. You can download the Fusion Archive or uh, download the STL if you want to use it in something like Tinkercad or, or, or Mesh Mixer or something. That'd be kind of cool. I have a little parts folder somewhere here. There it is, parts. I'll call this the Joy Bonnet. Awesome. So that is just one quick way, I think, to get something out of Eagle and into Fusion 360 and making it real. Obviously, you kind of need to have the component in your hands to really get the right values. And, and, and a set of calipers is very, very handy as well. So I can measure out some of the things like the thickness of the uh, just the tallness of things, right? So the body of the button, the actuator of the button, things like that, so it's very important to do that. But having access to the Eagle CAD files is definitely essential. Um, it helps out a lot. I really like the, the whole concept of exporting out of DXF instead of manually figuring out the, the measurements for every single thing, because that's kind of how I used to do it. But I'm gonna try doing it like this for moving on forward, so. Let me guys know if you guys have any tips or anything on anything I covered here. It'll help me out and help folks out as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. And be sure to check out the download links down below and the, the Joy Bonnet as well if you want to make some cool retro game pie projects. That's going to be, uh, yeah, product ID, this one, 36 or 3464. I'll have that link down below, obviously. So check it out, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.